My name is Marlene de Moor. I'm an associate professor in methods and statistics in the Erasmus School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. My first encounter with uh, open education when, when I was still working in another university and uh, one of my colleagues, also a statistics teacher, he used a specific tool, Graspol, uh, to let students practice with statistics. And that is uh, a tool that also uh, uses open educational resources. So that's the first time I heard about this. And yeah, I was immediately very enthusiastic about the whole idea, the whole principle behind open education. Yeah, what inspired me as well is that what I noticed when I was preparing my statistics courses is that we are all working on islands a little bit. Um, I was uh, making materials for my own course. My other colleague was also making his own materials for his own statistics course. And I noticed very quickly that we don't tend to share and collaborate that much. Although much of the materials that we make ourselves are quite similar. We started the initiative called Share Stats, which is an uh, open education project in which we shared open educational resources regarding statistics in the social sciences. And basically what we did is we developed a large item bank of statistics exercises for students um, that is openly uh, accessible uh, to both teachers and students. Well, SURF is a, a national institution uh, promoting ICT use in research and education. And they also have a lot of information about uh, open educational resources. And they also developed a platform, which is called EduSources. And on EduSources, it's a website you can search for um, open educational researchers um, that are created in the Netherlands by topic and by research fields. Well, I think what is nice about open education is that uh, the development of open education, this movement, goes hand in hand with open science. So as researchers, we are much more aware of uh, transparency of our research practices and we uh, try to do our research uh, according to open science principles. The way we use it now is as a supplement. So students, uh, some students find statistics very difficult and they want to practice a lot. They want a lot of uh, practice materials in addition to the lectures and also the, the meetings we have with our students, the contact moments. Um, so we use it really as an addition. Um, and the nice thing about the tool that we use is that we also can uh, monitor the progress of our students. And in that sense, we get feedback, direct feedback from the students using open educational resources. And we can use that to explain difficult topics in our lectures mm -hmm. or to put more emphasis on uh, certain topics. Well, what I like about uh, using open educational resources is that once you uh, know where to find it, it saves you a lot of time. For example, we now use in my, one of my courses uh, knowledge clips that have been developed by uh, University of Amsterdam and University of Twente. And uh, we use them in our own education, so I don't have to make uh, these clips myself because they're really good and openly accessible. Um, so that saves uh, a lot of time uh, for me as a teacher. Um, and with regards to developing open educational resources, I think it's great to work together with other uh, teachers, not only within our university, but also across universities. And uh, it's a lot of fun to work together on ep open educational resources uh, with others. And I think it also is beneficial because uh, you talk about your education of why you explain certain things in a certain way or why you create certain materials in a certain way. And I think in the end, it's, it enhances the, the quality of our education. And some people say to me, uh, for my course, it's not applicable because uh, my field is evolving so rapidly and I need to adapt my education to that. But still, I think that is really a misconception. 
um, because um, each course and each research field, uh, each topic has uh, core elements that don't change that fast. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, a specific theory that's really old that all students need to learn about, or maybe a specific uh, data analytic approach that, or, or, or research approach that is, is quite old and doesn't change that much. So I think um, it's true that an entire course uh, might change from year to year, but there are um, snippets within that course that don't change that much, that are really suitable uh, for open educational resources. A recent movement that I find really interesting within open education is about open pedagogy. So it's not just about uh, open access to software or sharing open educational uh, resources or so the materials themselves. But open pedagogy says, it's also part of open education, it says basically you, we should also be open in the way we develop uh, uh, our educational materials and the way we teach. So it's, for example, about co-creation with students, but also with professionals in the, the professional fields. And that's something uh, we have also been working uh, on recently to uh, help uh, panel discussions with both students and professionals from practice to discuss about how our education should look like and to let them have a say also. And that is the open pedagogy uh, movement. Yes, I do have some advice for uh, teachers interested. I think it's important to uh, start small. Pick a course that where you think, well, these elements of my course, I could create open uh, resource, uh, op open educational resources, or think about uh, knowledge clips developed by others that you could easily implement into your own course. So start with something small and experiment with it. But at the same time, I would advise uh, other teachers to think big. Already think about how you could scale up uh, your activities regarding uh, open education. I think um, in the open science movement, what we saw is that it started with some pioneers, pioneering with open science principles, and now increasingly it's becoming more mainstream. And I hope uh, we can see the same developments for open education as well, uh, where now you see that, at, uh, for example, at Erasmus University, um, people are experimenting, they are pioneering. Uh, but I think in the end, uh, it should become common practice uh, for teachers to work according to open educational uh, principles. And in that respect, what is needed is also that it becomes part of the education strategy of the university. Um, so it's also embedded within uh, the way we work uh, here uh, in developing our education and our teaching.